Welcome back. So today we have a cheap rip, and it's a product that some people love and some people hate. So this is Sporting News Conlon Collection from 1991. This is really just old-time players. There's no value, per se, to the cards, um, but I enjoy it because it's, you know, old-time ball players. Um, and I, I can pull Hank Greenberg out of this. Um, and it's cheap. It's, you know, you can find it for five bucks a box, maybe ten if, you know, you're unlucky. Um, and they made a heck of a lot of them, so there's, it's a plentiful supply. So, again, some people love it, some people hate it, some people will probably turn this video off already. But, I'm going to open up, I may not open up the whole box, but I'll open up at least a few packs of this. Um... Because a lot of you know what it looks like. Some of you may not, though. Uh, because even when you get it in those uh, Fairfield boxes or whatever, people generally just skip over them. So no one really opens these. Let me just take out a few of these. I would probably at least open until I you know, get a Greenberg. Um, and just go from there. So, nice clear packs. Again, it's nothing fancy. They really, like, rush these out into production. and But, again, it's fun. I'm just going to probably have to cut these more than anything. Just to open them. And again, if you like the old-time, you know, ball players, you know, the pre-World War II uh, game, and just pick this up. It's again, it's cheap. You get easily get Hall of Fame players. They're not worth much, if, if anything. Um, but as all of you, I'm sure, have experienced, when it comes to your PC, you don't care if something is worth a ton of money or if it's worth pennies. Um, PCs are not really there for making money per se it's for the enjoyment of the hobby again that's why I always try and end every video with telling people to telling you all to collect what you enjoy um, you don't have to buy the big expensive products and you know, spend tons of money on slabs or anything like that. If you like a player, there's always ways to do it on any budget. Open up one or two. I'll cut one or two more of these open. Again, this was you know, 1991, so it was trying to get as much product out into the marketplace as possible to capitalize on the popularity of card collecting at the time. Yeah, and some of these packs will just disintegrate, basically. So, all right, let's just start with this. We'll go through some of the cards so you can just see them. The old school feel, the cards, glossy front, you know, rougher paper on the back. And there's Lou Gehrig. And if you just look at it for the photos um, in this particular instance, not for the value of the card. Oh, well, there's some, just a little packaging on that, so I'm trying to get it off. There's no hits in this product. It's just straight up. Um, cardboard and with photos on it. And info on in the back. Yeah, 
Okay, go through, and again, it's they're great photos. This might be, I might actually, you know, put a binder together, try and put this set together, just because it's dirt cheap, and they are really good photos. Um, and it's really about the history of the game. And like some instances, like George Burns, 1926 AL MVP. Like I have his auto, but I, you know, it doesn't have a picture with it. So now I can take this, put it with the auto, um, and that'll be kind of a nice accent to that. Wally Burger. And like if you want to get into some of these. So Ed Walsh. You know, mostly forgotten by the younger crowd and some of the older crowd. Um, Ed Roush, again, another one kind of forgotten about. These are Hall of Fame players. Unless you're enjoying the vintage part of the hobby, you may not be fully aware of some of these players. Slaughter, Hall of Famer. The, uh, the other Billy, the original, not the Spaceman. Addy Joss, people forget about Addy Joss. Second lowest career ERA of 1.89. Yeah, second to... Ed Walsh, which you saw earlier, His career ERA was 1.82. So these are crazy numbers, and a lot of people have forgotten about them. Addy Joss also died before playing 10 years in the league. Um, and if I remember correctly, they have the Hall of Fame instituted the Addy Joss rule. Um, which allowed in circumstances where a player uh, either died or I think they might have extended to a career-ending injury uh, prior to the 10 years minimum service requirement, uh, it can be waived and they could still make it into the Hall of Fame. Rarely is it, um, rarely is it employed, but uh, it is on occasion. And then Conlon sets namesake. So these are all his photos. And some of these photos are very, very, very well known. So I do... It's kind of astounding to think that someone was around the sport day in and day out of the time and, and took all of these photos. Um, this is by no means all the photos he took. You know, this is just kind of the sampling, if you will. Also why you have the Hall of Fame players, but also the, the lesser known players. Um, names that very, very few people, definitely including myself, either have not heard of or haven't heard in a long time or um, this is the other nice thing even though these packs are basically just um, very kind of flimsy plastic it's almost like a Ziploc bag kind of plastic or what you'd find nuts and bolts in when you get an Ikea furniture plastic. Um, 
I'm not worried about cutting it open with scissors. Um, because, look, again, these are so inexpensive. Um, I guess the other nice thing is this was kind of right before the advent of sticky cards. The, the brick error, if you will. Don't you get into 92, 93, you know, through the early 2000s, if not properly stored, you get a lot of stickage. You get a lot of bricks and different products. Um, especially tops when they went with the glossy front and back. There's Ed Walsh, lowest career, a 1.82. One so, absolutely just crazy numbers. Imagine a player today having a career ERA of 1.82. As a starter, um... That would just be, you know, hand them the Cy Young every year. So there's an older Ty Cobb, 1928. Like that's the other thing. To, there's a Dutch Leonard lowest ERA in a season, 1914, with a .96 as a starter. Open up some more. Just pull some more out and then we'll see see where we are. So that particular one I'm just gonna leave in the pack. Being that Hank Greenberg. You know, that might increase the value of the cards in there from five to ten cents total. But like I said this. As I said before, it's not about how much is the card worth all the time. When, when I buy and sell, which, you know, obviously I post a lot of eBay finds and whatnot, I actually try and get a lower price on the PC stuff because I'm not moving it. I'm not, I'm not turning over inventory. Um, so because it's going to kind of stay in my hands, I want, I want it as low as possible. Because at the end of the day, I try and be very fair, or as fair as I possibly can, um, when I price things out. When I go to sell, um, I do what I want to pass on. If I get a really good deal, I want to try and pass on as much of it as I can, or as much of it within reason, um, to kind of the next person. So... Sometimes I may fluctuate from 
you know, it could be the same exact card and for slab, it could be the same exact grade, same exact subgrades, everything. And one, I might, you know, price a little cheaper than the other. Um, or I might kind of average the two out. So I'm feeling uh, particularly generous. There's the Babe Ruth. So I think about 1916, and we see cards are in, in 1914, and we see cards in the 1940s, well, photos in the 1940s. And the same guy took all of these pictures. That's one heck of a career. checklist again. Johnny Mize. Bob Feller. Of these photos since his career as a photographer seems to have ended just prior to um, World War II. And some of these guys in the 19, late 30s, yeah, these are guys that were playing baseball right before they went into the service. So Bob Feller was a perfect example of that. You know, had a great start to his career, and then lost two, three, four years, depending on the guy, depending on the player um, of their career. And, like, this is an interesting... Let me move him up front for a second. So, like, Gabby Kravath is a perfect example, or Cactus Kravath, as people called him at the time, it's a perfect example of just a player that's been forgotten. Forgotten by the Hall of Fame, even. Um, because prior to Babe Ruth coming in to baseball, this was the all-time home run leader. Um, so it took you know, Babe Ruth until... You know, prior to 1920, this was your all-time home run king in Major League Baseball. And Babe Ruth came along and just started shattering everything. Um, so, tremendous player in the dead ball era and rarely gets any consideration um, for the Hall of Fame, which is simply a shame. So, i I just throw that little story out there. And I'll probably just keep enjoying the old photos and opening until I find a green bird that's not on the front of the pack. So I can actually pull it and sleeve it just to put in a PC. I 
And again, this is also, so not only is this, these cards, are these cards inexpensive? So buying a box of these again, it's five to 10 bucks, depending on the day and the deal that you get. But what you could do is you can, you know, say if one of the kind of non Hall of Fame, non necessarily star players piques your interest, maybe they're from the same hometown or you should same birthday, favorite team, whatever, um, piques your interest, you can probably go find, um, you know, an actual period card for pretty inexpensive. Um, have a nice little kind of a quirky addition to your own collection. There's Joe Judge. No relation to Aaron. Grover Cleveland Alexander. And I also see these, especially with the holiday season upon us. You know, if you have a young child that's kind of getting into baseball or baseball cards, and you really want to introduce them to the history of the sport, and to a certain extent the hobby, you know, buy a box of these. Let them, you know, beat the heck out of them, read them, and enjoy them and you know not fret over if something's going to be in bad condition and the corners are going to be all mangled and just let him enjoy it take it if he wants to take it to school and you know talk with his friends about it or her friends whatever the case may be um he just wants to grab a card or two here and there. Um, you know, it's definitely worth looking into if you want to give a gift to a young child just getting into the hobby. So another example of kind of forgotten Hall of Famers, Kiki Kyler, Chicago Cubs, um, a career 321 hitter. You know, solid career. And just kind of forgotten. And you saw me in a previous video. That's why I got pretty excited about pulling a 35 Diamond Stars autographed Kiki Kyler card. Because his cards are not cheap. The gentleman died in 1950. So... His auto is exceedingly rare. And for Hall of Fame collectors, um, kind of one of those cards that you had to put off getting for a while because there's not many out there. There are autos, I should say. Yeah, I'm pulling a lot of Conlon. That might be the only Hank Greenberg in the box. So we may open this entire box because this is the last of the packs. Uh, you may be bored out of your mind, but I'm having some good old fashioned fun doing this. Again, I'm not flipping through to find that big hit and all that stuff. This is just enjoying the cards themselves, the photographs, the history of the game, the players. These days with the, the hobby, we've kind of gotten away from that a little bit. Yeah. It's much simpler. It's growing up in the, for me, growing up in the 80s and 90s. Um, more so 80s. There's still a lot of companies and they overproduced, but it was still meant to be for kids. 
and they weren't putting the big hits. You didn't have prices going completely insane for the most part. Per pack. I mean, this is 18 cards per pack. And you still had the quote unquote premium cards. First, it was Sport Flicks, I guess, would fit that description in the mid 80s. And then Upper Deck came along in 89. So, the quote unquote premium. basically anybody and everybody putting cards out um, from different stores would have their own sets I specifically remember the Kmart set or sets I should say because there was both uh, like legends sets and current player sets and all kinds of fun stuff open two more and we'll end your torture so one final big stack we'll go through here put that in there so I can my hands here photo In 91 like a few of these guys were still around so I'm kind of curious to see if any of these were signed by some of the some of the players that may have hung around into old age we want, but plenty of repeats. Wally Pip, a guy that um, led the league at home runs in 1916, but then was a starting first baseman for the New York Yankees, and then a gentleman by the name of Lou Gehrig came in. Pip was a little hungover one day. Gehrig came in, and Never relinquished to the position. It's a story many of you are familiar with, but it's still fun to refresh the memory a bit. And there's Mo Berg I'll put aside. Can 
Moving toward the end of the box. Getting the card I want toward the, like it's the last thing in this pile, or yeah, I'll just say shut out this time, which happens. All right, so I didn't get the single this time. I will again. I will leave this one just because I feel like it. Um, in the packaging. I'll probably just put that in the top loader. And did pull a Moberg out of it. So I'll add that to the PC as well. But again, that was 1991 Conlon collection. Again, the bane of, of some people's existence, but Again, I enjoy it because it's a really, really cheap rip of great photography of an era that is too often overlooked. A lot of players that have, for the most part, been forgotten. So it's a fun little history of baseball type of product. And for, like I said, five to ten bucks a box, um, definitely worth either ripping and enjoying yourself or really give it to a kid and and let them have at it because you're not going to worry about whether they ding the heck out of the cards or start bending them and you know all the stuff that a lot of us used to do as a kid and not think twice so anyway that's the rip i got for you this time around hope you enjoyed it and please remember collect what you enjoy Enjoy what you collect, and don't let anybody, especially the market or a YouTuber, dictate that to you. Most importantly, have fun. You know, get some cheap products like this every once in a while and rip them, just for the heck of it. Um, you know, buy cards, buy packs, buy expensive, buy cheap. And it really doesn't matter, as long as it's what you want to do with the hobby. Um and really participate in the community. So, make videos, watch and comment, um, attend live streams, group chats, go to your LCS or local card shows to talk about the hobby with friends and family. Do all of it, do any of it, you know, pick what you, what best fits you, um, and enjoy it. Because, Putting a little bit into this community, you'll get a heck of a lot out of it. It's incredibly diverse in personality and PC, and incredibly supportive. Even for schmucks that just started a YouTube channel a couple months ago, such as myself. So, again, I hope you enjoyed the video. Something a little bit different. Hope to see you again. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.